Welcome to the Translators Podcast. On this episode, we have actor Julissa Calderon. And we have Jerry back, ready to ask us a trivia question about Latina actors. Hi, Jerry. There's only one Latino entertainer to win an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony known as an EGOT. Rita Moreno. I said it first. What? You were still on Rita when I was a Moreno. Yes. Okay. Yes. It was Boricua Rita Moreno. But that's not the question. The question is, what show did she win her first Emmy for? Oh, damn. Jerry, uh, hook us up with a clue. <laughs> you don't pay me enough for that. Okay, I'm going to say the Wonder Woman TV show. What? Because Linda Carter was Mexican. So maybe Rita got an Emmy for playing her superhero, super homegirl. Oh. No, just no, that's very wrong. Okay, was it an episode of Charlie's Angels where Charlie had to hire a Latina angel to fill the diversity quota? Please, please, please stop guessing, okay? Rita Moreno won her first Primetime Emmy Award in 1977 for her appearance on The Muppet Show. What? She got one for acting with Muppets? Yo, don't sleep on the Muppets, all right? Because Kermit the Frog is one of my comedy heroes. I was more of a Fonzie guy. Waka, waka, waka. Guns all the way. Let's start the show. Latina actors have been part of Hollywood since the first days of silent film. In fact, several successful actresses became huge stars. From 1913 to 1917, Myrtle Gonzalez appeared in 78 silent films and earned the very creepy nickname, the Virgin White Lily of the Screen. Mm, Jamie, was that your nickname in high school? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I'm trying to educate people here, man. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Mexican actress Lupe Velez successfully made the jump from silent film to talkies. Jerry, do you have any more info on her? Lupe was the star of an eight film comedy series called Mexican Spitfire. Yeah, her films included Mexican Spitfire's Baby, Mexican Spitfire at Sea, Mexican Spitfire's Elephant, and of course, Mexican Spitfire Sees a Ghost. Damn, there were more Mexican Spitfires than Harry Potter's. Was there a Mexican Spitfire multiverse? Yo, those Mexicans was spitting hell of fire back then. The first major Latina international star came soon after, as Mexican heiress Dolores Del Rio took Mexican cinema and Hollywood by storm. She was a fascinating figure who was friends with Frida Kahlo and once played Elvis Presley's mother. Okay, I'm just imagining Elvis having a Latina mother. Elvis, don't be cruel! Well, we mentioned Rita Moreno at the top of the show winning an Emmy in 1962, but she also became the first Latina to win an Oscar for her performance in West Side Story. Well, and she starred in the recent remake as well at the ripe old age of 89. And speaking of West Side Story, two Latinas recently won the Golden Globes for their performance in the remake, Rachel Zegler and Ariana DeBose. Hopefully this is a sign that more Latina actors get the spotlight and shine they deserve. So shout out to the Salmas and Zoes and Americas out there continuing to pave the way for the next generation. Now, let's start our interview with an actor from that next generation, Julissa Calderon. start the interview right now but before i do i want to address something um jerry did some research mm -hmm. and there's a winky page yeah and it's saying that your personal worth is 64 million dollars oh do you, okay. can can we talk about this can you can you yo, who made that up I, yo this yo this page jerry showed it and it said you're worth 64 million dollars not True. two three million 64 million. Wow, do you have any? Do you have like that background alone is a one million dollars? <laughs> just so you know, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3. Yeah, make, get it, get it right. I've never, I don't, um, I've never, I've never saw that before, so that's kind of funny. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm definitely not worth that. So, all of the primos and primas that was about to come out of the woodwork, they got Julissa, mami necesita cirugía. I don't got it. <laughs> Julissa, I've been googling you. Uh, I'm doing all right, but I ain't, I ain't there yet. I'm doing all right for myself. I'm like, yo, is Julissa into like cryptocurrency that we don't know about? Like she invested in that? <laughs> is that like, would that be the craziest fact you ever heard about yourself on the internet? Or has there been something else where you were like, yo, they, they be straight up lying about me on, on here? Um, I think that sounds really, I think that sounds like top three. I think another one was, I recently saw it, that I got my body done. Oh. Um, 
your body recent, damn it was actually really recent i'm like i just actually lost weight like i just been leveling yeah. up because i got a little bit of money yeah. um but no that those top two i guess stupid shit like no six but on man the melo 64 million man the melo i want to take it yeah. all uh julie i want to take it all the way back um can you tell me how your relationship with your mother molded your insight into your career Ooh, you know what's so crazy? I, I feel like I get this question so much. Mm -hmm. Not specific like that, mm -hmm. but my mom comes up in every interview that I do. I guess I talk about my mom a lot, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I remember um, when we did... Thing. No, but I remember when we did an interview, I believe it was like last year, your mom jumped in and it was like, you'll pronounce my daughter's name correctly. Because oh. that's one like, of my Nat worst Jalissa, things. Nat Julissa. Julissa. Yeah, I was like, Julissa. And she's like, mira, it's Julissa. I'm like, okay, yeah, um, let's yeah. keep this going. You here. know what's funny? And the reason that she said that was because when she thought of my name, my godfather was like, no, 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 no. Do not name her that because people are going to call her Julissa. And she was like, they are not going to call her that because she's going to say Julissa. And so I think because every time she gets triggered, she's like, no, 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 that's not her name. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? Me and my mom, we're like, we're like this. I actually was just calling her. And I'm like, yo, let me, I got to get off the phone because I'm about to jump on a podcast. Right. We talk a lot. We're just, we're cool. We're really cool. And um, I would say, I think the reason that I'm, I'm like, she mold, the reason why my career molded how it did and how uh, my upbringing was because it was just, I was the only girl in the house. Mm. So it was, I got three brothers, only girl, just, and then my mom, my father left. So it's like, I think you just see as a girl and as a, and as a woman, you see each other, right? Mm -hmm. It's very different. You're just bonded no matter what. And my mom was always like, um, my mom, I could say this now because I feel like therapy, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but my mom chose me over my father. And oh, wow. I think that's a big deal. Like for a lot of people, I don't think people like when I hear a lot of, you know, just you sit, watch movies, you, you read and all these different things. And people always have these things where they always say like, oh, my mom chose her boyfriends and her husbands mm -hmm. over me. Now my mom was like, yo, you got to go. My daughter's not happy with you in the house. This was my father. This wasn't a stepfather. And this was me at 15 when I could really understand like what that really meant. So I think that once you see that and you're like, oh, this lady, she's, she'll take the world down for me. I think that that changes you. Mm -hmm. Like, that's my personal superhero. And so you grew up in Miami. Yeah. Shout out to Three 305, five. right? 305. Um, five. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank, yeah. yeah, no. <laughs> thanks to Pitbull, because everybody knows the, the area code of, the three, uh, <laughs> of Miami. Because I was like confidently like, yeah, area code 305. What's Orlando, mm -hmm. though? What's Orlando? Um, um 407? Bang. There you go. Oh, Mr. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I'm Mr. 407. Okay. 407? Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, if you, you want to claim that, that's cool. <laughs> he up in Disney a lot. He liked the theme parks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So what what did Miami provide as a neighborhood that is unique to your voice? Oh, man. Miami is where I'm from. I'm from Carroll City. So, and I claim that shit so heavy. Even though everybody's like, no, you're from New York. I'm like, no, I'm really from Miami. Like, I'm really from Carroll City. Um... I, I grew up where, and I, just to put into perspective of where I grew up, the same place I'm from is where Rick Ross is from, Trick oh. Daddy's from, Trina's from, the city girls are from. Um, that's that's where I grew up. That you must have went to a fun school. I went to an <laughs> amazing, I went to a very fun school. <laughs> no, I, I'm Wait, say, they're know? not all in your same grade, but if they were, it'd be like, wow, so much. Well, what's, what's funny, though, I didn't go to school in my district because... Okay, I used to fight a lot oh. growing up. Oh, right? you were, that's I, when you were Jalissa. That's when you were Jalissa. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was when I had a slick mouth, which is something that you could never see myself like having now, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> so yeah, I used to fight a lot. So my mom had me like in a district where it was outside of the district, outside of where we grew up. So it wasn't as bad, quote unquote. But we, I used to fight there too. Mm. So I mean, it wasn't like... Do you remember? Thing, but, do you remember what got you into some of these fights? Was it what was the? I never, I never knew how to shut up. Like if someone even said like, they could have said something silly, and I would be like, "Well, what you gonna do about it?" Like it was always, or what? You, or are you gonna do something? Or 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 I'll be like, "Well, what's up? What you you want to fight? Or what are you looking at?" It was never. Julie said, "Just shut up and just walk away because right. it's not that serious." 
Right. Julissa, it was leave, the bu- it was Julissa leave the bus driver alone. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I had a bus driver named Nancy. I cursed her ass out too. Uh, <laughs> Everybody no, can get it. Yeah. Everybody got it. Everybody got it. But no, I, I grew up where I grew up. I think it shaped the hell out of me. Right? It it created it created thick skin. Um, I don't think I could be where I'm at right now without the hood, mm. because for sure, everything I like, you know, you hear. The shit that you hear nowadays were the YouTube comments or the people leaving, sending me random DMs talking reckless. I'm like, you wouldn't say that to me in my face if I was walking around in my hood. Like, you're not going to mm-hmm. say that. So it doesn't bother me because I've heard worse. Yeah. I've seen worse. I've done worse. So, uh, yeah, my, my hood shaped me. My hood shaped my, my, my mentality, the way I move, the way I know that I never want to go back there again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I don't want to live there. I don't want my kids to live there. It's um, it's a different mentality. I mean, I know you guys can relate to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in college, mm-hmm. you changed your major to theater. What made you change it? What was it that made you say, I want to do theater? I kept I kept um, failing chemistry. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I was like, bitch, you can't be a nurse. You can't even get past chemistry one-on-one. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it's true like what happened uh, that ass this is exactly what happened there's only so many curitas you can put on what is it there's only so many curitas you can put on (laughs) i could i would drop the class and i'm like i'll take it next semester because i didn't want you can't have that on your transcripts right the grade the bad grade Mm -hmm. so i'm like okay let me drop it i'm gonna take it again next semester and i'm gonna do better Next semester came, your girl's job was like, oh, fail again. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so I dropped it again. And I remember I, clear as day, I, I say this a lot, this this part, because it's like, it's a real thing that happened. I was walking out of my chemistry class the second time I'm trying to take it. I just failed the first test. I knew I failed it. Like I was looking at it and I was like, I studied for this. I, like it, it Chino that I was reading. Like I was like, right. this is not what I studied for. Mm-hmm. So I'm like walking out of class, bummed. Like, dang, this is like 40 percent of the grade. I'm already like I failed. <laughs> and I, I took like a different route to get to the bus. I took a different route. And when I'm looking at where I'm at, it was like a building, just like a like like all mirrors, like or not mirrors, like clear glass. And the building was the theater building. And I'm looking at everybody in there and everybody looks like, it looked like recess, like literally the show recess, everybody's having a blast. Right. And I'm like, Diablo, I'm I'm over here sad about this chemistry test. So look at all these people having a blast, having fun. Mind you, I picked that school, the University of Florida in that, in that year because it was the number one party school in the nation. Mm-hmm. Oh. That, was, that was the driving force. Mm. <laughs> Jerry, you missed out. I did. Jerry, Jerry's like, I need to go back to school. I am, I'm going yeah. back. <laughs> We were winning championships. We were everything. It was the number one practice school in the nation. So I was like, that's the school I'm going to go to. I wasn't having fun. I'm looking at all these kids having fun. I'm like, bueno. Somebody else could do the surgery somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> I want to I want to be on TV. <laughs> I found my people. See, you listen. And sure enough, I in that moment, I called my mom. And I was like, ma, I want to change my, my major. Bueno. Yes. You already know a mom that's a Dominican mom when you go to school and you're going for pre-med and all of a sudden she's like, bueno, y entonces, Julissa, what are you changing it to? I was thinking that I'm going to do theater. <laughs> you see the silence that just happened right now? Yeah. That was the silence. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> she was like, ¿Y qué tú vas a con eso, Julissa? And I'm like, um, I, I don't know yet, mom. I'm a freshman. I'm only two semesters in. I'm going to figure it out. But I know that this is not, this is just, I don't want to do pre-med. This is not what I want to do. And so luckily I have a really supportive mom, man. Again, she just, she rides for me and she was like, okay, cool. You want to do that? Change your major, but you're not, but only change it because you're going to give it your all and that you really want to do it. Not because this is going to be the easy route. Mm. So she gave me like, she supported me, but she also gave me some real. And I was like, I right, cool, cool, cool. Even though it was going to be the easy route, right? <laughs> At least I thought in school it was. Yeah. Um. So instead, like the next week, I ended up just picking another major as well. So I double majored. I graduated with two degrees just so she could say, Diablo, my, me had recibió do. Mm-hmm. No, no, fueron do. Mm-hmm. So I could seem a little bit smarter and help her out. Mm-hmm. Was the <laughs> second degree just kind of like some random, you know, 
uh, I don't know, travel agent studies, something no, where you know no, you were never going to use? No, it works in this. It works in this field. I did. Um, I got a bachelor of a bachelor of arts in theater, mm -hmm. and then um, a bachelor of science in telecommunications production. Ooh. Ooh. So don't be giving her the second degree. Oh. Oh. She has it. She has it in she her house. She got it already. Exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I meant. Yeah. Exactly. So at this point, okay, you're all in, right? You're ready to you're ready to conquer Hollywood. Were there did you were there any inspirations, any any uh, like entertainers career that you kind of were like, oh, I would like to emulate that. Someone that inspired you? In college, yeah. When I was growing up, no, I didn't know anybody. I didn't really even think about stuff like that. But in college, yeah, once I once I switched over my major, um, Rosie Perez was like at the top of my list. Okay. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, it's her. I have the accent like this girl, or not like her, but I have an accent. I look like her, I'm brown, she's Puerto Rican, I'm Dominican, perfect, that's the girl. Um, and it also didn't help that a lot of people in college called me Rosie Perez. So I was like, oh, perfect. Wow. Well, that's and lazy, no though. Idea. That's lazy huh? on their part. Yo, Rosie Perez. Why? It's, it's like, that's like the only. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's the only one. Right. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> she was. She was the only one. But yeah, yeah she, exactly. That's why. She inspired me. She inspired me, man. I love how she kept it real. I mean, to this day, Rosie's still around because she's a real one. Definitely. And she's. um. She never changed and never altered like who she was, her accent, who, what she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she, to this day, I cannot wait. I cannot, I say I want to work with her. I will work with her one day. I mm -hmm. really, I know that, that I know that I know. Boom. And she's had longevity, which is tough too. Yeah. Like she's still. Oh, that's a huge. Yeah. I mean, people come and go. Decades. This industry is so fickle. Yeah. Yeah. So currently, what are some of the things that, uh, what are some of the obstacles that you have to overcome in your industry right now? Is that a real fucking question? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get in it. Let's go. Well, there's a Let's lot, talk. you know, as a woman, as a Latina, as a Latina woman. So it's like... Afro-Latina. Yeah. As, as an Afro-Latina. Afro um, as, as a girl who's not always politically correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> um, it's Does it a get lot, overwhelming? Does like... it get overwhelming at times? Maybe that's a better way. Um. Yeah, I would say so. But I think, you know, to go back and to say where I come from, that could be worse. It mm -hmm. could be like... So much worse. This is like kind of sometimes I'm like, oh, this is silly. It's politics, right? right? At the end of the day, it's all politics. But that it, that is like overwhelming in the sense of like, oh my God, I can't do this. Oh my God, like it hurts my feelings. No. <laughs> at mm -hmm. this point, I'm at a place where like, I'm very secure in who the hell I am. But most importantly, I know my craft. I'm like, bro, there's people on TV and film that suck. Like, it's just because of what they look like or they 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 just have the right people and the right team or it just so happen that they have some luck, not because they actually are talented or gifted. Mm -hmm. I know my gift and it's only a matter of time. Like the, the good ones always win. It's just you got to stay like one thing that I've always heard from like greats. Mm -hmm. If you ever hear any interviews with the greats, they all say the same thing. I just didn't give up. That's it. Mm hmm. That's a, that's the common rhetoric. They just didn't give up. So eventually, I know I'm gonna reach a, the peak. That if there is one of those things, like if there is something, I reach it. But for right now, I'm excited to just like to just be on this journey. Mm. So you said just never give up. Is that the same philosophy that you take when you know? Because because entertainment business is is a few is a business of rejection. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of rejection, especially coming up. Um, did you do you handle rejection well? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in the moment. But. Now, now. Can I tell you now, that I always right. did? Absolutely not. I yeah. I mean, it was like, damn, am I ever going to, am I ever going to get a break? Am I ever going to get this and this? Um, and I think the biggest thing was like, I honestly want to say one of the, one of the, one of the moments that I, I would say changed me in knowing that I was like, I knew who I was, right? I knew I was great. I knew the time was going to come and everything, but the fact that Hentify rewrote the role for me really told me a lot. And 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 I don't because we know that it doesn't happen. That's not a that's not a common thing that people like just, oh, we're gonna just rewrite this for that person so it could fit so they could fit this. Mm -hmm. We know that's not common. So to get a yes, but to get a yes like that, it kind of made me like stamp myself. Not them stamp me, but me stamp myself and saying, Oh, what you're doing is right, and however you move is right. You keep moving in your own lane because it's gonna, the cars are gonna move out the way. You, tu sigue, tu sigue pa'lante. Don't look at anybody else. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing. Don't worry about how everybody else is figuring it out. Don't worry about the nose you're gonna get. 
the yeses are going to be great and they're going to be worth it when you get those yeses. Mm -hmm. You were talking about Hentify and you were talking about your character, uh, Jessica. Can you tell me how impactful that was for you in your career and also being an Afro-Latina actress, how you felt it was for the viewers that were watching it? Yeah, man, that I could I I was just talking about it yesterday, truly like just saying how I am filled with gratitude for even it, being able to play that role. Um so close to home, very 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 close to home. I mean, everybody says I'm like I, like I said everybody's always like you're from New York. To mm-hmm. play a girl that you know is from New York that moved to LA, very similar to me, moved from Miami, um to play to be able to say, "Hey, She's Dominican, so she wouldn't say X, Y, Z. She'd say this, mm-hmm. and they listen and say, okay, let's rewrite that. Because we, all of these different things, to have my curly hair out, like, that's a big deal. A lot of people in this industry get roles, and we get roles that are like, oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. But do they do anything for us? Like, do, does it change people? Does, does it, like, change you? Jessica taught me a lot. Like, she taught me to be even more unapologetic than I already was. Because I was like, damn, this bitch don't waver. Like right. <laughs> the whole world could be crumbling, and she's still like, well, I stand for my truth, and I'm a, and I'm an activist, and say, if I'm a community organizer and I'm here for the community, then my feelings gotta be pushed away. And so she taught me stuff. She taught me in these three years because we've been working, yeah, three years, how to stand in my truth regardless of if people don't like it or not. And. To hear so many people come back to me and say how that it, how she inspired them and how she was just something different that they've never seen on television, man. That's the roles that I feel like people people pray for. Yeah. People that want that so bad. And you get, you know, you get a show here and there and you're like, oh, okay, that's cool. But like, are there roles like this? Mm-hmm. Is it mm-hmm. roles that people remember? She's gonna stay around forever, no matter what. She's gonna stay in people's hearts, in people's minds. She'll stay forever with me. She changed the game. She mm-hmm. changed the game for me too. Right. And and so then, Hint the Fire got canceled. Can you tell me how that your feelings about that and how did and your reaction and how you felt? Yeah. Listen, if we would have talked about this last week, I would have been like, "Yeah, we're not asking that question." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had to ask beforehand. Yeah. We were like, "Is it okay?" I was, I was sad, you guys. Yeah. I'm not even gonna sit here and try to front. I was I was heartbroken. Mm-hmm. I was, I was. And like, I could say this now, I don't care. The news was leaked. It wasn't even, Mm. it wasn't even supposed to come out yet. And somebody decided to be an asshole and be the first one to to spill it. And, um, and went to, I don't know who, who released it, right? Deadline somebody, but the news wasn't supposed to come out. So we already knew about it obviously before it came out, but we were, they were trying to hold off so we could get our feelings together and our thoughts Mm -hmm, together because it was special. It was special to us. Um, and then they came out and we were like, okay, well, we have no choice. We got to talk about it. And we got to feel and the whole world here. People are blowing up my phone. Like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I can't even process this myself right now. Yeah. And y'all telling me I'm sorry. It honestly felt like a breakup. Mm. That's like the only thing that I could kind of like, like make people kind of like under, try to understand it. Like, cause mm-hmm. I don't know if everybody could understand what that means to, for you to be so involved and love a character so much and love the people that you were working with. I think that was the biggest thing about it. It was like, yes, the show was amazing for me, but I made real friends on this show. Like, I do not know anybody that talks about their cast the way we talk about our cast and how we hang for real. I'm like, yo, what are you guys doing? Y'all wanna come to eat dinner at my house? Yeah, we're coming through. Like, this is just, this is just what it became. It became a family. So to now not, ever have that again and I don't know and, and and yeah we're cool still but you know there's a bond when you're when you're on something and you and you could you know collectively always go back to that so it felt like a breakup it felt like I didn't want out and and my guy wanted out <laughs> and I was like wait but I had no choice um to let go right and then the end you realize after the breakup the lessons you you learned you um you after the breakup you realize that maybe the breakup was needed and the breakup taught you and the, and the relationship taught you so many things. And so now you you run with it and you're grateful for that relationship and that person, a.k.a. the show. And you move on and you keep going. The You know, and then, and, you know, a show like this being canceled is also tough for the for the fan base, you know, because there's so there's only so many shows that 
deal with the Latino experience, have yeah. Latino main characters. And so they feel like they're losing a member of their family, right? And friends, right? I want to take a pivot because I want to talk about how you give back. You do mm. your keynote speeches. You have an amazing manifest that shit journal, which yeah. I personally have Ooh. one. When did that start? When did all this, doing the keynote speaking, like what inspired you to do that? And with the journal as well. Well, the speaking was just somebody reached out. <laughs> the, mm -hmm. I don't remember, I think it was actually the University of Florida. That was like my biggest, that was my first uh, big keynote. They were like, yo, you need to come back and talk to your school. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, let's go. And then I get there and I, I actually tripped as soon as I came out. I was extremely nervous. It was 800 <laughs> people and I had never talked in front of anyone like that before oh, in my life. Wow. So that was the start of it. And I feel like like how the acting bug is, right? I felt like I got I got a, I caught a bug of like wanting to speak at these schools because I was once a college kid and I didn't have nobody come talk to me to tell me like, you could do whatever the hell you want. Just, just an X, Y, Z and let me just preach to you and tell you. Um, and so now, because I know how, I know what that is being in those shoes specifically. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like any school that reaches out, I want to talk to them kids because man, they're the future. They're the truth. Anyway, if, you, if there's somebody you want to reach out to and there's somebody you want to talk to and like really love on and give your words of advice, it is definitely high school and college kids. Mm -hmm. So now that has been like, I always say, I'm like, I always want to talk at schools. That is a big deal for me. Um, especially for girls, right? Like, man, there's so many, I don't know that in this day and age, there's a lot of good role models. And uh, in the sense of like, I'm not a role model. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to say that to myself, but I'm not out here just, damn, I just posted a picture of me showing my ass today. Hold on. I was going to say, <laughs> usually I don't be showing my ass. Though, you know what I mean? That's not a thing. <laughs> Yeah. But I just in my stories today show my ass. I don't do that, but I don't. I think that the common uh, thing on Instagram is like show your body, mm -hmm. um, 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 get this money, get the bags, and get, fuck these guys. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, mm -hmm. so if I honestly think if there's there's no blueprint, and there's no, you know, there's no there's no one person that's right, mm -hmm. but I know my morals and I know what I stand for and I know my integrity. And so if I can just be the girl mm -hmm. that can kind of talk to these college girls and be like, girl, mm -hmm. don't do X, Y, Z. This is not the way. Then I know I can trust myself. I don't know about these bitches out here. I know what they do. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I know what I stand for. So I want girls to understand and look at me. So that's one, that's one of my driving forces. It's these young girls. And I think that's the same reason for the manifest that shit journal. I'm a journaler. I'm a serial journaler. I keep all my journals from all the past years. I have like nine right now from the past. I could date them back to 2011, 2010. Mm -hmm. I've just been journaling all, like a lot of my life and getting my feelings out before therapy was like a, the cool thing to do. I just will get my feelings out. And I, I really realized in three, I want to say three years ago, how writing shit down is a, is crazy. Like one day I'm literally watching that I'm literally looking at a journal and everything I wrote down had come to fruition that year. And I had forgot that I wrote that down. And so then I was like, oh, I'm conscious of this now. And so I started like doing it and being conscious and seeing it. And so for me, I'm never the person to hold the gems in. I want you to win too. I want all of us to win. And if I can teach y'all, uh, yo, you could write this down and really manifest whatever you want. It's something that's true to me. I wanted to bring out something that, that was like, like, again, true to me. I didn't want to bring out no clothes or no merch or nothing. Like, no, I wanted to do something that I would use myself. I literally have it. I'm, I'm, I'm about to be on my second journal, my own. And I want girls, truly, my thing, my mission is for these young girls to really understand themselves, their self-worth, and, and to love themselves. And I think there's power in journaling and there's power in manifesting. So we want to, you know, hear more about your process, right? If, if you were uh, going to teach an acting class tomorrow, what would be your, what would be the, on the first day, what would be your lesson for the class that you would want to start with to tell them? 
Oh, it will be like, it will not even be about acting. It will just be telling them to like, fuck people, fuck everybody. <laughs> um, love yourself. Uh, and yes. and who cares what people think about you? Because if you're trying to be in this, if you're really trying to be in this industry, you cannot care what people think about you or you're going to break. Like, that's like the biggest thing ever. So for me, it's literally fuck people, fuck what they think, love yourself. And, and how and maybe talk about talk about that uh, the whole session and then we could talk about other stuff yeah and and the craft and stuff and most importantly like do you suck that would be number two <laughs> like let me see what you could do because if you suck like go pick something else go be go be production like you be like it's okay you don't gotta rest, you don't you only gotta pay for this class but you don't have to come back anymore you know you try something else <laughs> I can't even take no, your money we, you so bad. that's what I'm saying like yo I want people to tell people yeah. like yeah lo, oh yeah oh yeah my name like you're not really that good at what you do yo like that's a good thing we need to be honest with people I really wish they would do that like in in like those improv classes and in acting classes right. they would tell people but they just want the money you know so they usually they tell people oh no you're great so everybody walks out of there with a certificate mm. but not everybody <laughs> is good like if they right. really all. suck no that's why yeah. I, I like when they used to when American Idol like they used to be real we're like you, yo you do something else yeah like if you sing in the shower stay in the shower you know what I'm these schools like, should yeah. do that they'll be like you know what I can't you're so bad I can't take your money yeah. just go home just leave <laughs> just go home <laughs> Yo, that's, that is a thing. That is like how some people are like songwriters. You can't, some, some songwriters, they're great. They know how to write the heck out of songs, but they themselves cannot be like, they themselves are not an artist. You can write songs for people, but you're not a star. So just stick to writing songs. And maybe you're a great writer in the writer's room for a TV show, but maybe you're not the best actor. So on that tip, you know, every episode we like to ask, people how do they get their creative juices flowing the creative hugo right hugo. Hugo. um hugo. do they have a routine you know ways to maximize efficiency just something that they do every time they wake up so uh, what how do you get your creative juices flowing uh, i don't know <laughs> <laughs> you just i don't know get I up journal. and go that's my thing journaling yeah. is my thing like write it down uh, like yeah that's I I am so I'm so honest when I talk about that. That is why I did that journal mm -hmm. because this is what I do. I write about random shit in my journal, right? I have an idea and I'm like, oh my god, really fast. Let me go write it real quick, like just to say I don't know X Y Z, like what I feel or or it was a funny ass. Somebody says something funny, I'm like, oh yeah, one day I'm gonna write that in something, and I'll just write it in my journal. So I think that's one. That's just like kind of my, maybe the most creative thing that I do, like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I talk to God every morning I wake up. Okay. That could be very creative. Yes. Amen. Yes. Every morning I pray. I read my morning mercies. And every night I pray. I don't care if I'm drunk. I'm like, <laughs> <"Yes, he's not." laughs> so Julissa, not, J not Jalissa. Not Jalissa. <laughs> we've had a very, you know, we've got to know you in this interview. Um, we've got some serious questions, but now we want to go back to having a little bit of fun. We're going to play a game. Mm. Are you are you down for a game? I mean, I'm here. Get the letters, you go. <laughs> She's like, no, I gotta go. Bye. Yeah. Like, It'll be short. Like, and... already. She's like, this Zoom is losing contact. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, you know, we're called the show's called the Translators. So this game, there's gonna be some translating going on. Um, usually, uh, studios like to. Uh, change American movie titles, and they when they anytime they translate it into Spanish for other countries, it's not usually the exact translation. Mm. So we're gonna throw you some <laughs> uh, Spanish titles of American movies, and you have to guess what the movies are because they're not. The, remember, remember, they're not the exact translation, but they're a little. They kind of explain what the American movie is about. Right. So, so the name is the titles in Spanish. Yes. So you have to guess what the movie is in English. In English. Ideal. All right. Okay. And there's no, you guys are not giving me no clues or nothing. It's just no. gonna be like sometimes, what? sometimes it's in the title. Because you know, <laughs> Spanish people be literal as hell. Right. You know we could give right. a clue if it's really like if 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 it's a brain buster. All right. All right. So okay. Let's, let's do it. Let's, let's do one. All right. Let's start this one. Let's start this one. Um, ¿Qué pasó ayer? What happened yesterday? What no. Movie? Yes. No. What but think about ¿Qué pa what movie so, could that be? Yeah. What could it be? Because it's a different name in English. The day after tomorrow. Ooh, that's, that's oh wow, that was close. That's a good one. 
And when she guesses, you can give the answer then. No, she did that doesn't work. Um, it's the hangover. What? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Oh, this is wild. All right. Okay. I see where you guys are going with All right. this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's go with another one. Um, let's see. All right. Papá por siempre. Mm. Papá por siempre. Okay. It would literally translate to father forever. Okay. It's a, okay, I'll give you a clue. It's a 90s comedy. Yes, it's a classic movie. A, a, a comedy from the 90s. It's definitely a classic. That was popular. Mrs. Doubtfire. Yes. Yes. Wow. yes. wow, impressive. That is impressive. <laughs> That's okay, impressive. I got a hard one. One. You know what? That's one of my favorite movies ever. Okay. Right. Okay, okay, I got a hard one. You ready? That's a good one, yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. <laughs> Are you still Yes, here? that's right. Yeah, that's correct. That's, that's right. right. That's Don't right. say it two more times, but you yes. Guys. Don't say it two more times. <laughs> that is correct. That is correct. Okay, so uh, one, one, more. One, more. Yeah, one more. One more. Final yeah, one. Final yeah, one. I'm really well on this. Yeah. Since she's, uh, since she likes to take, uh, you know, journals. All right, here we go. Diario de una pasión. Mm, that sounds like a novela, telenovela. Diario, the notebook. Boom. Yeah. Boom. This is there you joke. go. See? Yes. Wow. Yes. 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 Oh, I don't even want to know what you put in here. Oh, I got to go to the bathroom.